disappeared for some town. unknown reason. I think he's gone to get a gin and tonic, actually. Yes. <laughs> uh, 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 you're, you're through to Raw Pet Medics, and we're really, really pleased to be here. We're, get, we're doing question and answer, so it means we're free. We can do what we like. We're playing with, with new audio. So if we're more clear, please tell us. And if we're less clear, please tell us. Bren, how are you? Oh, okay. Fixing my shoulder slowly. This has been a, a long-standing uh, thing. I keep doing stupid stuff like waking up in the morning and then trying to turn off the alarm at the side of the bed and reaching out with my <laughs> like, go, 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 Going like that to switch the alarm. That's a really good idea if you've got a bad shoulder. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then re-ripping it. <laughs> If you stick it at the other side of the room, you could launch yourself across the room over this end of the bed and then <laughs> and, and damage your thing as you hit the floor, as you crawl to the to the alarm clock. How about that? I think that's a great idea. Oh, uh, I really should have. I mean, it was one of those, I was in a hotel room um, and literally thought I'd best make sure I'm up for the, the lectures and I uh, set the alarm and stupidly reached across um, slapped the alarm and ended up running around the room holding my shoulder, <laughs> screaming. <laughs> I, I think I managed to wake up the whole hotel just by the fact that I, I needed to were turn you, up were my you alarm. Screaming, were you screaming in pain or were you screaming at your own stupidity at having done <laughs> yeah, it? Thanks. At having done it. Like, no, 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 but that's what I would do. I go, oh, no, I'm so stupid. I've just damaged it and it was going so well. Ah, Brady's back. Right, don't you? We, we weren't Tell talking him. about you, Brady. We weren't. How are you, you Connor? Were. How are you? How are you? I tell you, how, I tell you how I am. Uh, I don't feel great at the moment. I, I think last week I was telling you that my kids had uh, all this respiratory diseases and uh, one the baby descended into bronchitis and all sorts of stuff. But two days after recovering from that, and we've got a vomiting bug in the house. Now I thought I'd seen my children vomit before, but <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Just short of expecting your baby's head to start spinning around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just relentless. And it's every hour or two, the poor thing, you know, so it's just covered in puke. And anyway, so my two two kids have been through it. And now my stomach feels like it's in a knot. And it, it happened last night. So I was lying there going, I think I'm going to puke. And uh, so I was waiting, but nothing really happened. And this morning, I started eating some chamomile from my chamomile collection because it's in biofunctioning. And uh, so I haven't actually puked yet, but I have a. I, I feel like somebody has a tight grip of my uh, of my stomach. So it's, I'm it glad doesn't you feel stomach there. I was just wondering yeah. what you were going to come yeah, up with. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I had a, I had a potato for 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 tea. Very Irish. <laughs> a single potato with a bit of butter and salt, and uh, it was actually very tasty, but nothing else. Anyway. <laughs> that's how i am lads a little bit under the weather but uh still fantastic. fighting fit yeah fantastic um, i'm i'm very well thanks for asking lads <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't you worry about me i'm in the shed uh, i'm in the shed it's a little bit chilly but i'm, all, I'm yeah. doing all right i'm actually doing my steve mcqueen look i got myself a a polar neck what do you think guys Ooh. um yeah i think it looks I well do, i think yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's going for <laughs> nice look Good enough for Steve McQueen. Good enough for me. Yeah. Have you, if you haven't Steve seen McQueen. Bullet, if you haven't seen Bullet, see it. Uh, watch it. Yeah. Uh, I have no yeah. doubt there'll be lots, lots of comments about uh, roll necks being abs either absolutely great or absolutely terrible. Yeah. There anyway. we go. Listen, you, you, guys, you, like, you like you like them, Nick. Anyway, that's the main thing, isn't it? Yeah. I think so. I think I do. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Or just um, not, not I, very I, warm. I just, yeah, I just let my wife do everything. It's just like uh, I literally can't dress myself anymore. I mean, once you relinquish your passport going into the airport and she minds the stuff, that's when you know you have just stepped away from all responsibility. And like now I just follow her through the airport, like days. I can barely travel on my own. When I went over to see you guys recently, I was scared. It's like scared of an airport. I've been on millions of planes. <laughs> but uh, so now it's the dressing. Like, can I, can I wear this with this? No, you can't wear that with that. And they come out and go, yeah, that looks all right. So I'm going, thanks. But I can't dress myself now. Like, she's not here. I don't know what to wear. What are we talking? about lads jesus um, um how, uh, yeah. Has your, how, yeah thank you how karen reed yeah has she, karen, has she karen karen actually said i look very suave so that's good oh, karen oh, very yeah. good yeah. Yes. Milk you can, you can a comment look look we've ah got, good got. good can you remember yeah. that one where he dives off the cliff into the into the into the boat and he strips off the wet wetsuit into his tuxedo and he puts a box of milk milk tray 
for goodness sake. <laughs> if oh you God. were going to do that, that, are you saying? Would you, would you leave a box of milk tray? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably not. Probably would have eaten yeah. off the top of the ship in oh. terror. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then somebody anyway, also wants to know: um, oh. Have you got the bike to go with it? Oh, oh! I think you're confusing the Great Escape, and I don't think he wears <laughs> a, a, oh, a Steve McQueen. I don't think yeah. he wears one of these. I think you need. I think I need to do my homework, but I don't think he wears a polar. Neck. I don't think there were a lot of polar necks in the Second World War in German concentration camps. Maybe, maybe but, not, Nick. But, but I haven't done a lot of research, so I will, I will look into that one for you. Um, I think he wears, wears a shirt when he goes over, when he goes over the, the lines going into Switzerland. It's very sad. Cool. Very sad. Anyway, we're digressing. We're digressing. Yes, we're we doing, are. We're doing an answer this evening, aren't we? We're doing we're doing Q&A. On. We've got lots of Q&A set up. Uh, so thanks for your Q&As, guys. Uh, I got some from my Facebook page. Some were sent into Patreon, Raw Pet Medics on Patreon.com. So thanks very much, uh, guys, for all your support there. It's been really good <clears> and consistent. So it's it's reliable for us. And thanks very much. And Pete is on the third podcast now. So once we've got three or four together, we'll, we'll let them all go uh, at once. That's why we're wearing these earphones, if you're wondering. It keeps the audio pure. No ping back from the speakers. Nick? Just a thought, just a thought. Um, several people have said they don't understand what the whole Patreon thing is. So I'm just going to say it in words of one syllable, as I understand it. Basically, what, what happens is um, people are able, because we, and uh, people were asking, we want to contribute, we want to contribute. So what we did is we got a Patreon, Patreon account where you can put in, two quid, three quid, five quid, 10 quid, whatever you fancy, just once a month, you just you just say, right, you guys are doing this week after week after week, and we are going to contribute to you two quid, three quid, five quid, two quid, three quid, five dollars every, mo every month because we want to support you. And the, what we're going to do with that money is we are going to, um, we're going to do some analysis on, on some kibble, and we are going to turn these things into podcasts so that you can take us on your walks with you and you can hear connor saying inappropriately rude things there you go that's what patriot patreon so it's, it's patronizing it's like you give us a few quid so that we can do our thing uh, and we're not spending it on lollipops i promise you okay bren we're all we're all done we're all done connor's gone <laughs> oh, oh. Just oh, you're joking. Oh, here he is. Why? What? I think I think he got bored of you speaking for a moment. <laughs> <He> just... <laughs> I got bored of me speaking. I can tell you. <laughs> we just thought we'd leave Nick to it for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Going off to get a gin, gin and tonic. Can you see me and hear me? We can. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, well, I can't. As I said, error occurred on the bottom of my screen, so I don't know what's going on. But um. Anyway, guys, we're on the Q&A, so is that where we are? Um, does anybody want um, to start off? I've, I've got a cracking one that I just want to burst out there. Connor, you need, a, you need a microphone. It's really tinny. <laughs> yeah, just try. Oh, he's off again. There we go. He's got an error on his screen. Uh, so just, just do you, does everybody like my, my cut? This is, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm drinking tea this evening. These guys usually drink old and ancient reds and chardonnays and all sorts so so, so i'm on the tea so cheers yeah everybody. what he's not telling you is there's actually gin in that cup yeah, no, just... <laughs> look I, I i'm not going to pull the wool over your eyes not that i could guys not that i could here's the tea is the man back uh, back again um does my sound sound better now yes perfect Brilliant. Perfect. Well done. Yeah, I hear you perfectly. Brilliant. I don't know what happened there. Sorry about that, guys. Um, anyway, listen, we're 10 minutes in already and we haven't even started answering their questions. This is why our questions pile up. We've got questions back from about half a year ago from our first QA. Yeah. <laughs> Bar Barbara's asked this question a few times. So let's let's start off with this one. Um, yeah. Let, let's pretend my dog is after eating some pretty savage poison and I feel like he needs to get sick very quickly. What are the veterinary tricks for making your dog get sick? Should you need to? Do you recommend it at all? Brendan, one minute, go. So there is a veterinary drug called apomorphine, okay? It's now a licensed drug, um, something that's available from TVM, which we use and is a licensed alternative, and it's predictable. So it's uh, in the right dosage for dogs who are no longer using a human drug, um, you know, and it is something that means that 
you, when you get to your vets within minutes, as in literally a minute of giving this drug, it will make your dog sick predictably. And it also means that your vet is able to make a decision about whether it's appropriate to make your dog sick for that particular um, item. Now, obviously, if it's acid or very alkali, it's not a good idea to be making them bring that back up and burn the esophagus again. Um, if it's a toxin, which, however, is you know, one of the foods, for instance, like chocolate or something like that, um, or some of the medicines like ibuprofen and things along those lines, then making them sick is appropriate. Making them predictably sick is appropriate. Now, in the days, in the bad old days, let's say, we used to use things like uh, washing soda and we used to use um, oh. things like um, mustard and milk uh, oh. as ways of making dogs sick. Um, but honestly, uh, this is one of the reasons why it's quite important to have a vet who's relatively local to you to consider the conventional treatments for if you've got those things. You don't want to be driving hundreds of miles uh, to be trying to you know, get that, that drug administered because the stomach empties, you know, depending on what it's eaten, you know, the stomach could empty of those contents within the hour. Um, if it's a liquid feed that's it's taken. So we, we need to give something that's before the hour's up is going to yeah. make them sick. So I think, you know, that's probably my five minutes up, but I would say predictably apomorphine is there. There are some tricks I used to use before apomorphine was available, and that's mustard and milk and the option with washing soda. Oh, yeah, I, would, yeah I, I completely agree with that. It's just I had a very interesting conversation with my brother-in-law about three weeks i was on, on my way to work and he rang me and said the dog has just eaten you yeah not as in you yeah but you y-e-w which is extremely toxic okay especially the berries okay just the word to the wise they, they do find apparently they find cattle with you still in their mouths dead on the on you know keeled over so with with wow. cattle it's very very toxic with dogs it's it's toxic so he wanted to get that out and i wanted to get that out and he didn't have a car and so he was stuck so i went for the soda crystals and the way to use soda crystals there is a there is a caustic element to it so it's not ideal however it's better than you y-e-w and therefore he, he he got a small kind of marble or a bit smaller than a marble sized crystal and just stuck it down the dog's throat and within two three minutes the dog was sick and and sp sprayed the kitchen with you little uh, leaflets Leaf. of no. of you. So it was very successful. And and so if you're if you're if you're pushed or if you, there's not a vet for miles around, then I think soda crystals. It's washing soda crystals, not something like, like not something like domestos or something. It's no, no. washing soda crystals. So keep them in and just keep them to one side. Uh, in case you are caught short and you can't get to the vet, or I don't know, the, 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 the car breaks down or what, whatever it might be, washing soda crystals, not bicarbonate of soda, washing soda crystals. Well, so, they don't sound, they don't, yeah, they don't sound nice. They sound like they do the job. Tell me, how do you get milk and mustard mm. down a dog's neck with stuff you have in the kitchen? How could you possibly do that? My dog would not, would not have yeah, a single bit of Literally, that. you dissolve as much... English mustard into milk as you can, and you basically, yeah, you get a syringe and you feed them like a goose. Or, yeah, or you know the basting syringe that you've got from Christmas. Wow! You know, wow. But there would be a, uh, one of the risks there would be with uh, inhalation pneumonia. Yeah, if you're stuck oh, sticking yeah, no, that stuff down his throat, it's look, like oh, yeah. nightmare. No, it's not a nightmare. nice thing. It's, I, it's I do have some dogs that would drink it because it's milk, and then before they know it, they suddenly go, "Oh, that's not the milk that I thought it was." Um, but mm. it, look, this is these are old remedies that we used to use. Honestly, if you want predictability, get you to get the, the apple 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 apple. Yeah. Now, yeah. I, I've seen a few people say, "Yeah, what is for some minor toxin?" Look. That's all very well. Yes, of course, you could use activated charcoal. We do use those things in certain circumstances, especially when it's gone beyond the hour or, you know, it's likely that that stomach has emptied. Um, but the uh, and those activated charcoals can be really, really useful. They do them in various liquid forms uh, rather than just being dried pellets. Um, and you feed them that until they, the feces goes black. So you just keep topping them up um, uh, every half hour to an hour. Um, 
and that's great at adsorbing some of those uh, toxins, but it's not the be all and end all. And if it's a really bad thing, it's often better to get those toxins out yeah. than try and keep them in all the way through the gut. Um, and then you've got to make that decision. Is this a mild toxin or as Nick just pointed out with something like you, um, is it a fairly severe toxin? And yeah. I think that's unfair of us to put that onto you guys watching that you can make that decision about um, the, you know, the level of toxicity in some of those yeah. things. I like that tip actually, Brent, where you're saying about the compound that you guys use, which I can't remember the name of it already. So if I've forgotten, maybe these guys have as well. Um, but to ring your local vet and ask them, do they have that in, in stock? Because you'll need to know which vet to drive to. There's usually a few options around the place. So if the vet doesn't have it in and you're a client, they'll probably get it in to have it on the shelf, wouldn't they? It's not the sort of thing that's going to go off very quickly, I imagine. I would say yeah. it's standard issue. I'd say every every vet in the in the country will have some. Okay. Now, cool. now that it's okay. licensed, apomorphine, okay, apomorphine. should be, um, so Emmy Dog, it's licensed as. Um, yeah. And Emmy Dog is, you know, pretty much, I don't think there's a vet that doesn't have that. Yeah, it yeah. comes in, okay. a, in a pack of five vials. So if they've used one vial for a dog, you know, they're going to have four more. It's very unlikely they're going to have five dogs in a row that are going to yeah. need it on the same day. Let's do a, just let's a, do a uh, sorry, Nick. Yeah, just, uh, I, sorry, I just, uh, just looking at the side here, uh, people are uh, talking about uh, hydrogen peroxide. That really is pretty caustic. Yeah, good for your hair. If you want to go for super super blonde, oh but yeah, I'd say not not for down the hatch. Yeah, not for down the okay. hatch. Um, yeah. The this, uh, the follow on question really from that is what about the other end? So dog with diarrhea, guys, give us your best minute on dogs with diarrhea. Your favorite tips? A uh, bit of diarrhea, nothing dramatic. What's your favorite tips for a dog with diarrhea? Nick, you're first. Okay. All right, I'll go first with this one. So there's 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 two types of of acute diet. Acute just means it's suddenly appeared as opposed to chronic which means the dog's been squitty for six months okay that's that's it yeah that's the only difference between those two things so there's two types of dog with acute sudden onset diarrhea there's the healthy happy i'm still i'm still waggly and and, and, and healthy dog with acute diarrhea and there's the oh i'm not right and i'm dehydrated and i'm really feeling terrible type dog okay so those two dogs the sick dog you need to take to your vets. I would say I'm just going to keep this really, really simple. The bright and healthy dog, I would say you've got uh, just as if it was you who had the squits, you wouldn't be down at the doctors. OK, so we, let's talk about the healthy dog who's got the squits. I would suggest that you put them onto very uh, light food. You continue to feed them. In the old days, we used to starve. I would put them onto light food. I'd be thinking about bone broths. I would be thinking about marshmallow or uh, sustainably sourced um, uh, tree barks, slippery elm, yeah. And I would ride it out and I would put them onto the food, which you know to be the, just the absolute mildest thing you possibly do. And you just run with that. And they should, if it's just a simple, they've got a ham sandwich in the, in the, in the woods or something like that, they should be better within two, three days. Sounds okay. good. Brenda. Brendan, you got any any uh, wisdom to add to that? Yeah, I think you know you're absolutely right. There's there's certain levels of diarrhea. I think um, if there's any blood, okay, if it's se seriously watery, if there's vomiting at the same time, um, I think Nick's absolutely right. They're likely to be dehydrated, and are likely you should be going to your vet so that, that can be assessed as they need fluids. Um, I think for the mild diarrhea um, that's sort of like pasty, maybe a bit of mucus, um, you know, it's coming and going. Uh, maybe they've had it for just, you know, they've eaten something a wee bit off color. Uh, you know, I think green clays can be really useful. Um, you know, the monterillamite clays and things like that as well. Now you often find these in that paste, you know, that probiotic paste um, that you, you see from, Protexin paste, do them. You know, there's there's loads out there, isn't there? Um, and Antimate. I think, you know, they can be really useful for sort of 24, 48 hours. Slippery Elm, a lot of people have talked about Slippery Elm in here and absolutely uh, can be really useful as well, especially for the, the sort of colitis, that jelly mucus types diarrheas um, with straining. Um, and I would definitely say fluids, 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 um, you know, mix them with bone broth, Okay, that's a really good, you know, guys, I like bone broth. And I would just say that's a really good way of um, 
ensuring that they're going to take that fluid on board. Um, some people will use Diorolite, you know, for the kids, the non-flavored versions, mix that up in the right proportions, that can help. Um, but honestly, if you can just get the fluids in with bone broth, um, that does just as well for me. Nick said, Nick said not almost better, almost better with the bone broth because you've got um, uh, glutamate, which will help with the lining of the gut. It's very, very hydrating. Yeah. It's very delicious. So I'd, I'd go with, uh, with the bone broth rather than the yeah. uh, 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 hydration fluids. You know, if you've got um, some, so there's a good reason to keep them in the freezer. Yeah, perhaps. Nick said. Nick said to fast, uh, not to not to or to keep feeding. Brian, where are you on that? And then I'll say where I am. Well, I I actually think that the gut health needs to be supported. And there's a lot of people that talked about starving for some time. And, and I think there's a lot of, um, you know, giving them 24 hours fast just to allow their gut to settle. But I actually think that giving bone broths and feeding, you know, the, the gut flora, the good gut flora and feeding the, the uh, enterocytes is actually a good uh, thing to be doing so uh, gentle absolutely you don't want to be giving them you know the hottest curry you can find um, uh, or anything else that's suitably irritant uh, I think you just need to be gentle with that gut and think about what you can give that's easily digestible and I can't think of anything that's more easily digestible than a good quality raw food so why yeah. would you be starving them you know yeah. in those circumstances I I, yeah. I, I I would have typically said to people that um to skip a meal for sure dry them out a little bit yeah. and leave out a couple of types of water so you've got your standard water you know your your filtered water keep away from the chlorinated waters for sick tummies uh because he's got a bit of digestive upset hasn't he so and a second type of water uh, i like the tip of a, a teaspoon of local honey in a in a in a mug and a and a little pinch of good quality salt any any of the salts uh you know the rock salt or sea salt pink salt himalayan salt no, not the refined stuff and you dissolve that in the mug and you pour that into a second bowl of water and that's his that's his electrolytes because once you've got the squits your your electrolytes control your the osmotic potential of your gut so they go haywire so you need a little bit of that and i like the broth idea then so that's a nutritious way of getting some nutrients in for that mm. little fast that he'll do i don't mind fast i don't like the word starve i think starve gives people the wrong impression and the dog's gonna be but to fast because you've got a dicky tummy uh, so yeah broth is a real cool tip i like that but for the next day or two considering that he might have a bit of a ropey tummy i think a highly digestible diet would be something really simple someone just touched on it earlier there's so many different types of this chicken and rice is not what you recommend chicken is one of the most top the most likely foods antigens in dogs uh if you're, certainly if he's got gun issues consistently but also a whole lots of other reasons so you know but that we don't need to get into but like you know there's other meats so you can do tins you can always have this ready because diarrhea comes all of a sudden and you need to have this ready so having it's hard to have lots of options and have to run around looking for them. So tins yeah. of Pacific salmon are fantastic. And I cut that 50-50 with a bit of porridge or a bit of quinoa, uh, just a bit of stodginess because the stodginess of that stuff actually soaks up a little bit of the wet. So it's an easy meal. It's slightly cooked, so that's not a bad thing. It's more. It's actually, you get more. It's slightly easier to digest than the good for, for mm -hmm. a day. And it's, it's there and it's ready to go. I would move away from raw dog food for a day or two because it's got a few different types of ingredients in it and i kind of see that kind of little salty pacific salmon meal so fish and potato yeah even like any bit of meat with a little bit of carb i, I would lean on for just a day 24 hours 48 hours and then move back onto my raw as quick as possible so, uh, and then yeah yeah I, I think it's really important here that we just also inform people um what happens in the gut to to understand why they've got diarrhea it's not about how liquid the stuff going in the front end is is how liquid is coming out the back end okay um this is all about you do realize that 90 percent plus of the fluid that goes in the front end is absorbed in the small intestine and then ultimately what the body does is that it will rehydrate the feces going out the back end um oh, cool. you know and therefore if it feels there's a toxin in there an irritant that's at the point where it will flush the chain and actually pump fluid into the gut, uh, back into the gut to make the diarrhea. Um, and it's really hard. You're more likely to help the gut by one, giving a probiotic. So if you're talking about porridge or something like that, then sorry, prebiotic, you're, you're talking about porridge or something like that is feeding the gut friendly bacteria and helping them to survive and outstrip those that are dying off. 
um, or you're giving something like the slippery elm that's going to line the intestine and stop those toxins irritating it, stop the body from flushing the chain. So there isn't really a way of bunging them up, um, I don't think, with a, a, a stodge of any description. Yeah. And I think for acute sort of like one-off diarrheas, now if they've got chronic diarrhea and they've had it for like a week plus and you're going to continue to feed them the same thing over and over again, Obviously, yes, I'm worried about that antigen getting through into irritate the body and possible allergens build up. I think if it's a one-off, I'd be quite happy with a chicken bone broth, uh, you know, support yeah. or or just plain chicken or just plain fish, um, uh, yeah. as you said there with a the tin yeah. for, for that period of time. You, you can within 24, 48 hours. The diary is resolved. Yeah. You can soak Go. up water, though. Chia seeds, psyllium husks, still ripe seaweed fiber, all those things suck up water and produce a slightly firmer poo in diarrhea dogs, though. Do they not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's the, the biofunction. That is lining the gut and a pro prebiotic. Uh, that's, what, that's how psyllium husk works. Is it? I thought it was the fact that it's a soluble fiber, just like chia seeds, and like it's chia seeds in a glass, it just soaks up the water. And it slows the passage of digester as a result, as opposed to indigestible fiber, which bulks the stool with water and phew, shoots it through. Has the same effects in dogs as it does in humans, isn't it? Is I think Nick's going to have to pull this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. We're done. We're done, guys. Yeah. I'm going to say <laughs> Fiona on, on Patreon, who we now all understand very, very clearly, is uh, says, and I'm going to just summarize it, Fiona. Thank you for your question. She says, um, She's feeding it a, 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 a DIY diet and she's doing a good job, but she's concerned that are there any supplements, nutrients that are absolutely essential that she might not be getting in a DIY approach? I think it's a great question. It's, it's, it's kind of an exam question, actually. <laughs> so exam question. Uh, Dr. Brady, what would your answer to this particular exam question? Are there any essentials that you would always want in every diet? Not necessarily every meal, but every diet. I think essential is probably a strong word. I would say I would struggle to come up with an essential supplement that the dog absolutely has to have. Because if I thought there was an essential supplement, Dudley would be getting it every day. And I don't put supplements in the dog's food every day. I pick really good quality ingredients as much as I can. <laughs> Not always. And, uh, you know, he has a good diet and I mix it around and he gets bits and pieces. And uh, I look after the window dressing now and again. And instead of just leaning on an omega-3 supplement, he gets whole sardines now and again. And I get these fresh muscles. So he has a wonderful diet. He is a lucky, lucky man. So uh, on a day-to-day -day in a healthy dog, I would say that's it's possibly overkill i don't do it but i am not the perfect example of it like while well, i preach an awful lot of stuff i'm no purist but if if i was to lean on supplements like you know any nutritional supplement my favorite is always going to be seaweed i'm always going to say that seaweed is just a, as an all-rounder highly digestible source of really readily available vitamins and minerals iodine which you don't get in very many other places but also just these compounds that don't exist above the waist, fucoidins, fucoxanthin, uh, all these alginates, it, it's just so, so beneficial for the dog. So he does get these seaweed supplements that I have here all the time, but I wouldn't say they're absolutely essential. I would kind of say that his his meat, bone, and organ mixes of high quality are essential, and the rest of it is is, is fancy window dressing that I lean on. Like a, I would throw a handful of mussels or an egg or some probiotic yogurt and blueberries out in the grass. I do, but I, I wouldn't, I'm not sure about essential. What do you think, Nick? You've got a question. So, there. so, so, no, I'm just thinking. Yeah, you can see that I'm thinking. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so, what you're saying <laughs> is that you do think that the omega threes are essential, but you give them in in waves yeah. of different in waves of different foods. So exactly. Uh, so, so you're not supplementing, but you are saying they need to be there somewhere in the background. So, as part of the scenery, they need to yeah. be there. So great. Okay, so that's a really good. So omega threes, I completely agree. Omega threes. So Bren, what 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 do yeah, you? Yeah, I was going to absolutely call him out on making sure that whatever foods you give have those fatty acids in, and, and yeah. uh, you know, giving some way of giving that. I think there's some essential amino acids, and I think again that should come in good quality raw foods. So you know, trying to go. Oh my God, I must give. You yeah. Know, this. I think if you've got. I'm not one for giving a fully balanced 
absolute everything is in everything every day. I love to give the variety as you guys do, you know, and I think, um, you know, varying the amount of organs, varying the types of organs that they're getting, um, you know, whether they get tripe sometime and tripe others, uh, not tripe others, that's, you know, really a, um, a variability. Um, my dogs aren't as lucky as, as yours, Connor, and I don't give them seaweed every week. Um, yeah. and they don't get muscles every day. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. it's like, you know, I, 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 yeah. if, if I could have muscles every day, I might give them some, but I'm yeah. not allowed. So, yeah. um, yeah, but, I, but this, I think this, this goes to the, the fact of don't feel guilty. I think there's a lot of kind of, uh, raw guilt. There's a lot of, oh my God, I'm not putting nine different types of protein in the, in the bowl. And I'm not giving six different types of seaweed and you know 10 yeah. types of berries in the bowl and therefore people, you know if you look on instagram they, they, the bowls that yeah. people make are just ridiculously yeah. amazing and i don't think we should be feeling guilty because we're not doing that as long as you're getting the variety so, so both of these guys have said variety is the key just as we feed ourselves so you give seaweed for one week and so brendan might do uh, seaweed for a week and then he might not for two weeks and then because and i think there's value in that because we and our dogs have have evolved in a in an environment of of uh paucity in an environment of not much around and when there's not much around your body absolutely turbocharges and goes i'm going to suck every last a gram milligram of iodine out of that diet because i'm feeling a little bit starved what do you think about that as a as a concept? Good. A little bit of paucity. There's probably a better word for it, but you know, a little bit of lack of certain yeah. nutrients. I think giving all the nutrients all the time is like driving along with your foot on the accelerator in your car the whole time. It's like we're going to put yeah. the best possible fuel through the engine all the time. You're going to burn through that engine much more quickly than if you're just going. A little bit of gas, a little bit less, a little bit of gas, a little bit less. What do you think? I just as a concept. I would I would also say in that, you know, we know that some of these nutrients compete with each other to be absorbed. So if you've got everything in in full quantities all the time, then actually you're starting to go back to diffusion. You know, there's sort of like it's just gotta be in the gut. And this is the big problem with highly processed diets where they're mm. reconstituting with lots of these additions, is that actually things start to compete with each other. So they've got to up the levels. And then before you know it, you've got excess amounts going into the diet, purely and simply to try and keep up with what the body needs. When actually, if you can give a bit of variety and you know some of the, the, uh, the levels of zinc might absorb better, and then you've got mang manganese may absorb better on another day, and then you've got you know some of the iron salts, and then you've got you know, and so it goes on, and you've just got to. That's the beauty of variety is it's giving different levels, and the body can actively transport. You know, it's one of the ways that it takes stuff out of the gut, actively transport those ions into the body when it needs them, and stores them. You know, it has the ability to to sort of sequester these in the body tissues for when it needs them. It's not, yeah. isn't it? It's mad, Very really. And, then, and those that are even more precious to it that it can't do that, it makes it itself. So they make these. Like it's 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 phenomenal that people think that it has to be in there every day. That's not how we eat. It's not how the dogs eat. I think there's a lot of pressure on people to like mm. you know get it absolutely perfectly right, or the dog's arse will fall off, or the want of some mineral you can't you can't pronounce. You know, <laughs> they, like you're you're going to be fine. And, and so I don't kind of tend to say that. I, like like Brennan says, look if if I see a cheap bag of mussels in Tesco's and they're all coming from Scotland at the moment, so it's it's just unbelievable value, you know this. So like you'd have a bag, but when it runs out, I don't rush down to buy more. It's like yeah, if when I think of it, and so I think good quality meat, good quality ingredients, that's going to be your saving grace and variety and that kind of stuff. I wouldn't say this. So I think we're all kind of agreed there on that. There isn't probably I think a, so. absolutely yeah. we've absolutely got. I'm going to shop in Tesco's. Huh? I was trying to test, it? Uh, well, yes, we are. We we have a choice, but I mean, it's either Germans or the English. I mean, so we have to pick one. I've also got super value, but uh, yeah, Tesco's, <laughs> Tesco's Tesco's doesn't have muscles. There we go. I've just okay, uh, um, guys. Yeah. I'm going to put in another Patreon uh, question, and this is from Heidi, and she says her cat. This is this is a cat question. Her cats have had really pretty ferocious uh, harvest mites. 
and uh, one of the cats who wouldn't take uh, a, a herbal preparation had so was so bad he had to have a shot of steroid defamedrone which is like a three to four to five week shot of steroid and that did the trick any any thoughts um uh, connor have you come across harvest mites at all you either have or you haven't no, with this absolutely kind of absolutely just, haven't I've, mm. people have asked me on my page a few times but I, as i said to them only a few months ago i said look i'm only going to be googling for you so i hate that if i don't know i'm not going to offer an opinion so i really don't know anything about harvest mites but i have seen very knowledgeable raw feeders and i know one of them's here tonight uh struck with harvest mites so uh i believe in them it's not like they're they're some sort of ghoul that i sometimes i'm a bit really really about fleas and worms and the stuff that i see to be able to handle but uh harvest mites no i don't know so i'm, I'm eager to learn yeah come on man you've, you've got a preparation probably on one of the shelves behind you haven't you uh, <clears throat> i should have mate i should have because i'm not going to get dinner tonight but my my darling wife produces these amazing things called uh dermadog dermadog.com she's got the dot com nowadays and they, uh, this is this is not it this is thank you for that plug by the way bren this is not it. This is for where you want to calm the skin down. But in a bottle like this, she does uh, Dermadog Insect Defense Spray, which contains ooh, lemongrass and um, rose geranium and cedar. And basically, you spray it on the dog, and the dog is then less attractive to uh, to harvest mites or ticks or fleas. Less attractive. It's, it won't nuke them like Brevecto or uh, Advocate or something like that, but it will definitely push you in the right direction. Now, what I was going to say was you can also use internal. So there are things like uh, Vermex do flea and tick. They do a herb preparation, which makes your dog or your cat less attractive to flea or ticks. Or there's another one called Billy Nomates, or there's another one. Da, da, da. There, there are a few around. So from a from a natural perspective that's it so just one last thought would be some dogs get loads of uh harvest mites and some dogs are not really very attractive to harvest mites a bit like people and midges and also some dogs get harvest mites and they're not very itchy my two thankfully bluebell and mouse bless them they are naughty naughty girls but they they get they get harvest mites they get harvest mites but they don't really itch very much. And so we kind of leave them as much as we can because the more you mess, the more you can get problems. Uh, whereas there are some dogs who you just find one harvest mite and they're scratching themselves like crazy. So um, that's kind of the context. And if they're not too bad, you can get away with natural products. And if they are bad, you're gonna have to uh, uh, chip in with the pharmaceuticals. What are your yeah. thoughts, Bren? Yeah, so I, I think, one element i'd just say so harvest mites are something they're found usually in the autumn okay they're um usually in the long grasses um they aren't um something that i would say parasitize and live on the animal they tend to crawl up they bite they give a nasty bite and then they tend to fall away um and they can cause problems in horses you know and all the way through to our dogs and cats in this case for the, for this um yeah, that I would say if you're going to use any of the aromatherapy oils, please make sure that you offer them to the animal first. Put a little cloth with some drops of it on in their favorite bed. And if all of a sudden they don't ever sleep there again, then don't use that by wiping it on their legs as a repellent. It's not a good idea. Um, mm -hmm. But if they do take it, that's great. I think there's uh, some products, as Nick said, that can be given orally. If you want to make one yourself, um, there is uh, one where you can mix a, a sort of half and half solution. So the herbal solutions that you get of echinacea um, and uh, the apple cider vinegar, mix those two together and then steep into that about three of the cloves, not bulbs, cloves of garlic, okay? Chop it up fine and just steep it in there for about a week or so. And then after that, you can just give five mils to a 10 kilo dog okay Ooh, um like on a daily basis uh, in that sort of season can be a really useful um uh, deterrent now i find that there is a product available online i think it's called ticked off that uses probably more accurate 
you know, additions to that. I may use garlic oil instead of the steeped garlic. But if you wanted a homemade option, give that a try. I've seen people use it and it's gone down from them being infested with like 20 ticks down to like one or two. Doesn't totally obliterate them, but it at least, you know, keeps the numbers down. I think if you can't necessarily do that yourself or you want, you know, something to kill those harvest mites, conventionally, people have used topical fipronil um, on those areas because the mite doesn't live long enough on the animal, then you need something that's going to kill it pretty quickly when it jumps on the, the lower limbs. Um, but on, I wouldn't be an advocate of fipronil myself. I think there's many other ways and I think you've got to assess if it's an issue for your, your pet um, as to whether that's a problem or not. So have, have a look at some of these other options that are out there. Fipronil is the is this is the uh, is the ingredient actually. in frontline, but you'll also find it in kind of Johnson's this that and the other that you'll get at the pet shop. It's been out for thirty years or so, yeah. so uh, is that the you one? know you can get some cheap products as well with fipronil with an F. For is fipronil. that is, is that the one they're asking us not to use? Or like is that's the right? Water, yeah, is that the yeah, water because table? of the killing bee, bees and everything else. Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, so, like, I assume we've harvest mites here in Ireland. Is there is there any sort of? I actually. I, come back to the ticks thing because i wanted to ask you about lyme disease so just to remind me about that but i put up a, a post on facebook of a good few american kind of followers and uh they've got a big tick problem they've got they know their tick stuff so i said guys who's in a very ticky area and has had success with natural products tell me what those natural products are and the mm. two that came up was exactly what nick's after saying there rose geranium oil which you can actually drop on the neck in some form don't quote me uh and it actually can permeate it, it can kind of live in the dermal layers of the dog so it actually works in the same way as, as, as some of the drops which is which is fantastic and the other one that came up was cedar side the original cedar side act the actual gum from the cedar tree because there's loads of synthetic versions of it that are cheaper but true cedar side is very pricey and all um you know you, you see it mentioned on the appalachian trail when the guys are doing all the hiking and they, they swear by the cedar side so they said there are mm. two very potent anti-tick things but as regards the actual uh was it sand flies harvest mites Harvest mites are still new to me. Is there any argument for um, dogs being more prone to these because they aren't uh, healthy? Would they be more prone to these bugs if they're not healthy? Cedar side. Very good. Cedar side. <laughs> Thanks very much. I thought he was trying to show us the bill it's, there. I was like, it's, high, it, it's high technology, guys. Yeah, yeah. it is. Brendan, yeah, like that. Brendan he's got all these across the digital... Bottom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what about, lads, what about ticks? Have you ever seen Lyme disease in a dog? Lyme disease. Yeah, I had I had, I had a Labrador with Lyme, Lyme disease. Uh, we 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 think he had ascending uh, uh, antibodies to the Lyme disease test, and he was ill with kind of diffuse bit of hepatitis, a bit of his his joints were were a little bit of uh, uh, polyarthropathy and what have you. But he was pretty good in himself, and so we used uh, he he went on an antibiotic. Sorry, guys um whose name i can't remember begins with c brendan for lyme's disease begins with c were you Do using doxy is the one is it not Dox Stomorgil? doxycycline 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 Dox yeah, doxycycline Dox begins with d uh, not c begins with a d close but no that's, what the, that's what the that's what the british army take before they go training in Exmouth because you're crawling through long grass all day and so wow. many of the lads were getting sick that they said you're going on doxy for the three months of this training out here in these fields because this is just prone tick area and they're crawling through the grass it's not interesting they take it as a preventative because they know just to lose 10 percent of them would just be too uh too ruinous to the kind of training isn't that mad so it's a oh, real big wow problem. Mm. wow that's gonna really Although, screw yeah. their microbiome yeah. yeah exactly devastates the microbiome but also we've got antibiotic resistance you've got all sorts of other issues yeah that yeah, yeah totally piled part, part with yeah. that and let's face it the, the one of the reasons we're looking at some of these natural remedies for you know these repellencies and stuff is because we're now officially being led down look we should not be for two reasons we should not be using these insecticides and antiparasitic drugs you know just constantly um and, and the two reasons are resistance you know, they just as with antibiotic resistance, we're gonna we're starting to see resistance with some of the the flea and worm treatments, um, and we're also looking at the devastation to our environment, what it's doing to the natural nematodes within the soil layers, uh, yeah. and also the insect life, and 
the knock-on effect that has to all of the wildlife that's around. So, yeah. you know, we do need to be really careful about how we use uh, those antiparasitic drugs and not just think that actually um, I'm going to save my dog from itching from a couple of fleas and yeah. therefore I'm going to give them a whole year's worth of, of uh, product. Um, and I think somebody said, well, my pet doesn't ever have fleas or ticks. Well, absolutely. Don't use these drugs if your dogs don't have that keep combing yeah. through keep checking them you know i'd much prefer you to be checking your dogs much prefer you to be doing worm egg counts you know and that side of things uh, and you know not even using a herbal wormer or flea treatment um unless you need it yeah exactly totally agree with that yeah why well, wouldn't brilliant. you yeah. brilliant 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 i think we've got a conclusion there guys thank you very much for that yeah. oh, well, the, book of the week book of the week as if it, book of the week oh 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 i've got some books i was i wasn't gonna uh, everybody everybody i, was, I wasn't i wasn't gonna be said books i wasn't gonna get mine out <laughs> ah Brett, uh, yeah, Connor, Connor, thank you very much yes, the longevity pair of, yes 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 very good but it sort book. of reflects that one which there's been some really interesting reviews lately thanks Don't for those guys <laughs> oh <laughs> but, yeah yeah the, yeah uh, Oh, look, okay. that is, you know, I think I think it says it all when it's still uh, number. I think it's in the top ten of the um, New York Times um, yeah. bestseller Phenomenal. list. Though. Yeah, yeah, uh, it says it all, of, doesn't it? But yeah, a that's a of, little little bit of a yeah. Somebody refresh my memory to say, oh yeah, you should really reread that. And it's uh, good. Even Gundry. Good. Um, Gundry. I, like, I, I love that tagline: "How to die young at a ripe old age." That's quality. That is quality. <laughs> love us um, it's really good yeah guys what are we yeah. going to do next week what are we going to do next week can we're i make a suggestion to... no we're not no uh oh. but you didn't get the memo sorry about three hours ago she emailed to say that nikki kamak wonderful north point pet she can't make it so she's she's transmuted that to the 14th of december if that's okay with you so great that's good and uh can i suggest for next week how about we have a look at creating ratio feeding versus formulation so it's just it's it's putting diets together by eye versus formulation using some kind of software or some kind of uh, balance you know measuring everything out but how what do you what do you think is are you cool with that yeah i mean i'd, I'd love to show people what it's like to formulate for a company and kind of say like this is this is the kind of stuff that you have to do and talk a little bit about what you're formulating to. And I think there's a, there's days and days of material in that for sure. What about you, Brian? Are you happy with that? Yeah, I'll just show them how I chuck stuff together. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Totally. That's I what totally I agree. That's what I, agree. I totally agree. I'm taking a mic. I was yeah, no. <laughs> but we, we, are, we are all on the same page and it seems a bit kind of like uh, flippant, doesn't it? But it's like, that is that should give people solace. That like, you know, we we do this for a living. We study this stuff every single day. Think about it all the time. And our advice to you is don't be worrying about it. You know, get an idea of what a roughly rounded diet the dog vary it around he'd be absolutely fine that you'll get the, to 98 percent, and then you're just wasting your time thinking about that tiny little bit you know but anyway look we'll talk about that next week. that's a good one formulation cool. balance all that sort of stuff cool that sounds great okay okay let's go for fabulous that. okay yeah. very cool. very good with six minutes over uh connor you need to go and see your young children yeah, it's and, two days, yeah. uh 